Hello and welcome to the seventh video in my series on getting started with AutoCAD. My name is Chris and in this we're going to talk about the basic tools you need to modify the objects in your drawings. Please note that I'm using AutoCAD 2015. If you're not using it, things will look different. That being said, let's go ahead and keep plugging away here. The first thing I wanted to show you is the move tool. So let's go ahead and get into that here by first giving some, us some objects to move. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line here, and I'm going to say this line is 12 inches long. You can see that's pretty small. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, and we're working on 12 inches space here. Let's say we want to move this 12 inch line um, three feet to the right. So, let's, so what we can do is we can make our selection first, and then use the move tool, or you can use the move tool and make your selection. Making your selection first and using the move tool can, will confirm your selection. This is the same with all the rest of the tools, incidentally. So you go ahead and select it, and now it's going to ask you for a base point. So this is the first point that you want to to use to define a segment along which you're going to move, uh, the distance of which and the angle of which you're going to move your object or objects. So let's say we want to move it this way, and now it doesn't matter where I click because we want to move this over to the right. So as long as we're pulling to the right, then we'll be moving it the right direction. So say we want to move that 36 inches. And you can see here, there we go, we got it 36 inches to the right. Um, and again, we were able to do that really, really consistently because I've got ortho turned on right now. Um, if you look down at the bottom here, we've got ortho turned on and um, that lets us move on straight angles. Now let's say I don't want to move 0, 90, 180 or uh, 270 degrees. Let's say I want to move on a 45 degree angle. This is where you use what's called the snap ang command. The snap ang command is available by typing snap ang and press enter and then you tell it what degree of rotation you'd like to have on your crosshairs. So in this case we're going to say 45. You can see that our crosshairs are now rotated 45 degrees. Now let's go ahead and try the move command again. So let's go ahead and make our selection, use the move command, and now you can see I'm moving in ortho mode um, on 45 degree angles. Let's say I want to move up this way 36 inches. I'm going to go and zoom extents here and you can see that we moved it. So that's the move command. And again, the move command doesn't require that you pick specific points that are um, on the object itself or anything like that. As long as you're your, the movement of your mouse is directionally the way that you want to move the object, the move command will function. So let's go ahead and talk about the rotate command. I'm going to go ahead and reset my crosshairs here really quick. So I'm going to type snapping, set to zero, and you'll see our crosshairs are back. So let's go ahead and select this object and use the rotate command on it. The first thing it's going to ask you to do is to specify a base point. Now, one thing I should have pointed out before we got into all this, I guess, was that you can have as many objects in your selection and run this tool on them as you'd like. There's no limit that I'm aware of for this. So let's go ahead and get this rotation going here. It's, asked, it's asking us to specify a base point. So we'll pick the point around which we want to rotate. Now this could be anything. Uh, in this case I'm going to go ahead and pick the end point of this segment and you'll notice here again we've got ortho turned on so if I pull down it's previewing that we're going to be rotating this object in these directions. If I hold down the shift key really quick so that I turn ortho off temporarily you can see we're rotating around this. Now this could be perfect. This could be exactly the way you'd like to do things but it might not necessarily be that way. So let's go ahead and do something that's a little more uh, technical here. Um, let's let's grab this object here and say we would like to rotate it. But we want to rotate this so that it's laying flat. Now we pick our point of rotation and we start hold down the shift key and we can eyeball it pretty well, right? But we can't necessarily get it exactly where we want it to be, and that can be frustrating. So the way to get around this is to use what's called uh, rotation by reference. So we'll go ahead and make our selection, use our rotation tool, pick our point of rotation just like normal, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and say we want to use a reference. So type R and space or enter, and then we specify a reference angle. So we want to pick that, we want to pick that, and now all of a sudden we're moving that object 
as though it was stuck to our crosshairs. And we can say we want that to go flat out. And the way that we can do that is just let go. We got ortho turned on and it's going to snap right down. And there we have it. So rotation by reference is fantastic. The next tool I wanted to show you is the extend tool. And this goes hand in hand with the trim tool. So let's go ahead and uh, grab the extend tool here and let's say um, that we've got a line. And we want this line to go all the way down to this line. Now in this case, that's really not that hard because these lines are perpendicular. So let's say we have another line and the line is coming out at like that. We want to extend this line so it intersects with that one. So let's go ahead and get started with the extend command here by picking it. And now it's asking us to select the objects that we'd like to extend to. So remember the first selection is where you want it to go. And the select second selection is going to be what you want to extend. So we want to extend to this line here. So we're gonna go ahead and pick it, confirm our selection by pressing space, enter or right click. And then we pick our second object. You can see here in AutoCAD 2015, it's got this nice preview feature. So let's go ahead and select that. And then you confirm your, your command by enter, right click or space. And you can see that this line is now intersected. And that's a perfect intersection. Um, we can't, you can't get any better than that by eyeballing it. That's geometrically perfect. So let's talk about the trim command now. So we've got these two objects here and I'm gonna draw another line across these. And let's say we wanna make just a triangle right here. We wanna get rid of all the rest of this garbage around it. So what we can do is we can use the trim command to do this. So let's start by getting rid of this segment right here, just as a little preview to show you how the trim command works. The first thing you do with the trim command is you pick what's called a cutting plane. Um, so your cutting plane is, is effectively some object that you're going to use to cut everything else. In this case, we're gonna use this line here that's going up about 45. So we'll go ahead and select it, and then you confirm your selection. Now you can have multiple cutting planes. You're not limited to one, and they don't have to be lines. They can be all sorts of different objects. So let's go ahead and confirm our selection by right-clicking or pressing space or enter. And you'll notice there are a whole bunch of options down here. We're gonna talk about fence in another video. Um, fence is really useful when you're doing lots of stuff that are in the line, but for right now, we're just going to use this default options. And you'll notice that when we mouse over this, it gives us the option to, to chop it right on that line. It does the same thing with, with, uh, with us here, but you'll notice it gets rid of the whole line because we're not taking this line into account. It's just saying anything on, on whatever side of this line your mouse is on is going to get cut. So we go ahead and chop that there. And let's go ahead and chop that one right there. And there we go. We've got those two cut. Now let's use the trim command here with multiple different uh, cutting planes. So we're gonna run that command again. And again, a fast way to be able to repeat a command is to press space or enter or right click right after doing a command and we'll run the last command. And what we can do is we can select multiple things. So we're gonna make that selection right there and say, we want to build a cut on any of these. And we're gonna confirm that selection and then we can start trimming. And you'll see here that we can trim that down to nothing. The next tool I want to show you is the copy tool. And the copy tool is basically the move tool, uh, except it makes a copy. So let's go ahead and um, let's make an object. I'm going to just draw a circle here. And I'm going to draw some lines just for fun. And let's use the copy tool. So the copy tool, again, works just like everything else. You can either make your selection first and then run it, or you can run it and then make your selection and confirm it. So let's go ahead and make our selection first and then run it and it's available right here. And this works again, just like the card, the move tool. So you pick a point and you pick another point and that's the, the vector on which you're gonna copy. That's the segment, the distance and the angle um, on which you're going to, your, your object is going to be copied. And it's that simple. If you have the copy tool down, you've got the move tool down. If you've got the move tool down, you've got the copy tool down. The next tool I want to show you here is the mirror tool. And the mirror tool lets you reflect objects across a mirror line and copy them that way. So it's another way to copy, but it's a way to copy things flipped. So let's make this selection here. Uh, again, this works just like the rest of our tools. We can make a selection first and confirm it with the tool itself, or we can use the tool and make a selection and then confirm. 
and we're going to select the mirror command here. And let's say I want to, to mirror it um, across this line right here. You can see we pick a line and then it asks us, would you like to erase the source objects? By default, it says no. Let's go ahead and confirm that. And you can see we've got this, these two objects that are mirrored. Now with these circles, it might not be that, um, that apparent. So let's go ahead and do it with these lines here so you can see. So we're gonna make our selection, select the mirror tool, and you can see here that it's going to mirror these objects exactly where they are across that mirror line. And this mirror line doesn't have to be orthographic. It can be wherever you'd like it to be. So let's say we want these objects here and we want to mirror this. We want to mirror it across a line like this, but we want the line to be somewhere around here. You can, you can have that mirrored any way you'd like. So there we are. And let's say that we want to erase our original source objects. We say yes, and you'll notice that it's down here, but it's mirrored down there. The next tool that I want to show you is the fillet tool. The fillet tool has an option here for chamfer, which works effectively the same way, except it does a chamfer instead of a fillet. Now, the fillet tool lets us fillet two objects together, and it gives us the option of having a radius on the fillet as well. Now, this isn't required, uh, and the fillet tool can be used to trim objects really quickly. If you've got two objects that you need to trim back to each other, you can do it really fast with the fillet tool. Or if you've got two objects that you need to extend to each other, you can use the fillet tool for that as well. So let's go ahead and play around with the fillet tool a little bit. The fillet tool requires that you make two selections. The first one is the first object you'd like to fillet. The second one is the second object you'd like to fillet. Now it doesn't look like anything happened here. And the reason is because my radius is set to zero right now. So it's going to be, um, there, there, there will be no radius on there at all. But let's go ahead and run that again. And let's say we want to change the radius. So space R space, and let's say we want that radius to be five inches. So now we pick our first object. Oh, and it won't let us do our second one. And the reason is because this object is too small to be able to fill it with a radius of five inches. So let's go ahead and try this again here with a different radius. Let's say a radius of one inch. Now we pick our object, you pick our, your second object, and and it goes with a radius of one inch. And this can work really well for lines that you'd like to intersect at some point, but you don't want to have to try and figure out where they intersect by yourself. So what you can do is you can say, okay, I'm going to fill it. I'm going to say, this has got a radius of zero. And you pick the first line, you pick the second line, and they intersect. And this also works if, let's say, you've got a line and you've got another line like that, and you want these two lines to just end right there. You can trim off this excess by using the fillet tool, selecting the first one, selecting the second one, and it trims the, the rest of it off. The chamfer tool works the same way, except it has a chamfer instead of a fillet. And if you look at the options on that, it'll walk you through pretty well. The last tool I wanted to show you here is the offset tool, and it's up here at the top. This works differently from the rest of the tools because you don't have to make a selection first. You go ahead and select it, and then you tell it how much you'd like to offset. So let's say we want to offset this two inches, so we type two. And now what it asks you to do is to pick an object you'd like to offset. So let's say we want to offset this circle. So you select the object, and you pull the direction that you'd like to offset. So let's say you want to offset out, or we want, and then we want to offset out again, and then we want to offset out again. We can do that really, really quickly and get concentric circles, or you can do that with lines and get parallel lines uh, just really, really fast. There are definitely more tools up here that you can use for modification, um, but as far as basic tools that, that are you need to have to be able to use AutoCAD effectively, uh, what I showed you is, is about it. Anyhow, uh, so by now you should be able to move and copy. You should be able to rotate, fill it, an offset, and you should be able to mirror objects. That's it for this video. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you thought it was good, give me a thumbs up. If you thought it was great, give me a subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.